Hey guys, my name is Tom, and welcome back to another devlog for my still unnamed pirate game. In this one, my main goal is to make some UI improvements and fix a few bugs which I've been avoiding for a while. So yesterday, I made a few tweaks to the post processing, and I increased the resolution of the water mesh so that the triangles are now the same size as those in the terrain mesh. Although it's a subtle difference, I think it's definitely an improvement. Today, I put together a script that allows me to select groups of connected triangles within a larger mesh and assign various colors to those groups. This means I can combine meshes which would otherwise need to be separated because of color variations. For example, I could combine all the ship's meshes and turn them into a single object. I probably won't do that since it will affect Unity's ability to cull parts of the mesh that aren't actually visible, but this will come in handy for character customization, especially since it allows me to change colors at runtime. Now if you're thinking that this is kind of off topic, and that I could have used this time to work on something that's more important when it comes to putting together a playable version, well, you'd be right. Working with meshes programmatically is just something I find strangely satisfying. Maybe because it can be quite challenging at times, without being quite as tedious and frustrating as complex multiplayer mechanics. Anyway, I had been thinking about this for a while, and I figured I'd just go with what I felt like working on in the moment. Also, this isn't really related to my own project, but if you weren't aware, the dark theme for Unity is available to everyone for free in Unity 2019.4.8 and 2020.1.2. If you prefer dark themes for your applications, that's definitely worth checking out. I'm personally going to stick with the light theme for now, just because I don't want to upgrade my project at the moment. Although I haven't properly informed myself about what's new in Unity 2020, I've heard there are some fancy new debugging tools, but some people have mentioned that it's still a bit unstable. Upgrading only for the sake of getting the dark theme doesn't really feel like it's worth it, so I'll probably wait until a few more of the bugs in the 2020 version are fixed, and then go straight to that one. It's a week later now, and I haven't really made any progress, largely because I've been spending my time doing some freelance work. However, I had wanted to start getting some UI and menus going yesterday, but it was just one of those days where I didn't get anything done. I'm really not proud of it, but I got stuck in the vicious cycle of feeling crappy because I hadn't done anything, and then continuing not to do anything because I felt crappy. Anyways, I do want to get some proper menus in place, as the UI right now is a bit of a mess. It looks terrible when recording gameplay footage, and the way it's set up, it's quite inconvenient to use. I also don't plan on ending this devlog until I've fixed the top two bugs on my Trello list, so I'm going to get to work now. It's shortly afternoon on Friday, and it turns out that UI work doesn't make for the most interesting content. I'm not sure how this took as long as it did, but when I look back at what I've done since Wednesday, it really doesn't seem like much, despite the fact that I've spent quite a bit of time on it. I'm not really sure how else to explain it, but the last two days have just felt really sluggish and inefficient. When I originally decided to overhaul the UI in this devlog, I was also planning to add a settings page with some key binding options, but I sort of realized that that's not really necessary at this point. In a way, it would have sort of just been something to keep me busy without really getting me closer to a playable beta version. The only really noticeable changes I've made is the UI styling. I picked a font and changed the colors, and that's kind of it. Most of my time went into organizing the menus properly on the backend, and making it possible to hide and show different parts of the UI with various buttons. That will make it easier for me to record footage without manually disabling UI and then having to rebuild the game. Now, it is already Friday, and I should honestly get a start on editing this video, however I'm very unsatisfied with what I've done so far. Those two bugs are going to get fixed, and I remembered that the grappling hook is currently just a cube, which is, well, not great, so I might do some modeling. Alright, so it's now Saturday afternoon, and I still haven't started editing this video because I've been working on a whole bunch of stuff. I was going to do it all yesterday, but my dad and I ended up routing an ethernet cable through the walls to my room upstairs, which means I can finally move my computer in there too. It took forever and was really frustrating, particularly when the drill came out of the wall where we didn't want or expect it to. Anyways, this morning I made a model for the grappling hook, and to be honest it doesn't look half bad, despite being on the simplistic side. In case you're wondering though, it's not final. 
I'll definitely be going through and renovating most of the models in the future. Additionally, I added some real-time blurs to the background of the main menu scene. I used a solution by a really cool guy whose name I won't even try to pronounce because I probably completely butcher it, but I'll leave a link to the GitHub page in the description. This solution makes use of renderer features, and despite the fact that it's blurring the scene in real time, it only costs a few frames. Also, as I said yesterday, these two bugs were going to get fixed, and I did in fact manage to fix them. The issue where you started floating into the air when interacting with various objects was caused by the fact that gravity wasn't being applied while interacting. I came up with a really genius solution to this. Applying gravity even when interacting with stuff. The problem with the camera not positioning itself properly when interacting with cannons was a bit trickier to solve. This actually used to work, but if I remember correctly, it broke when I moved the server into a Unity project, which would mean that this has been an issue for about 4 months. I'm glad those bugs are fixed now because they were always very noticeable when I was recording footage for devlogs. Not being able to see where I was aiming with cannons was extra annoying, particularly during the last devlog when I was implementing ship holes. I usually try to have my devlogs uploaded by this time, so I really need to start editing now, but I'm glad I managed to get this all done after all. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to demolish the like button, and leave a comment for the algorithm. I think it's about time to implement some sort of melee combat, so I'll be doing that in the next devlog. If you don't want to miss that, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.